So hippie water is a low dose hemp derived cannabis infused sparkling beverage. We just added Josh Joseph to our company who he is one of the four founders of Grassroots, which is one of the biggest cannabis be- uh, companies in um, cannabis. Uh, but they had the biggest exit. So they sold for 830 million in 2020. He's extremely experienced in that space. We wanted to make sure that we had somebody in cannabis that knows this space way more than we could ever imagine, you know, over 20 years of experience. For more ideas on how to raise venture capital in this market, make sure to subscribe below. Well, Sasha, I, I've been really Hi. excited. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, I've been really excited to to bring you on the podcast ever since Scott Vandenberg of Influencer Capital introduced us. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Uh, I, I'm just thrilled to be able to, to speak to you uh, about hippie water, about me, anything that you want to know, I'm here. There's a lot to cover, uh, and for the audience, you know, we we have a lot of LPs, we have a lot of GPs and VCs, so they might not know how how incredibly famous you are, whether it comes from Pretty Little Liars or Inherent Vice or, or Heroes. So tell me a little bit about your experience as an actress. Yeah, so um, I started in the industry. I'm from South Africa, so we immigrated to the states when I was little, um, and I started in the entertainment industry around three and a half. I was doing commercials and and little things like that, but um, I was able to get into my first TV show when I was uh, five called Family Affair, which was a remake. It was with Gary Cole and Tim Curry. And and that was really fun. And I just, I I fell in love with it. Um, My parents were in the entertainment industry as professional dancers and they were kind of used to that, that kind of nomad lifestyle. Um, So we moved to California and uh, they just kind of invested in me full time, which is an incredible sacrifice. Um, and, you know, they told me that, you know, if I ever wanted to stop, I, I could, but that, that never happened. I love my job. So I've, I've been in acting uh, for over 20 years now. And it's just kind of, you know, it's taken me a lot of amazing places, but I've, I've learned a lot and found a lot of other things that I love through it. Um, Pretty Old Liars is what you were referring to, which was a TV show that started in around 2010, 29, or sorry, yeah, 2009, 2010, um, and became one of the most popular shows in the world for for the amount of time that it was on, which was around seven years. Um, very lucky to have been on PLL, and you know things that have come from it have been amazing. Um, and yeah, I mean that that journey is is kind of just what what started. Uh, everything else that I've been able to accomplish. You started so young and, and you have 18 million followers on, on Instagram. You must get hit up all, all the time. How do you manage your mind space and how do you, how do you make sure that you, you have a healthy kind of mental health around, around being a celebrity? It's, uh, it's difficult. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. You know, it's, uh, I think a lot of it is based on, um, <laughs> again, who you surround yourself with. It's, it's about separating yourself essentially, you know, we've got who we give out to the public. Um, growing up on TV, Priya Liars is a great example. You know, I, I was 12 when I shot the pilot. And um, during the show, I graduated high school, I um, you know, got my driver's license, I, I got engaged, you know, a lot of these huge milestones happened in my life. Um, but I had some major health issues while I was on the show. And you see it. You know, anybody that watches the show watches my transformation, watches me grow up online. And based on the, that time in my life and the connection that Priyo Liars had on social media, um, you know, I I garnered a lot of support and a lot of incredible fans and following, but a lot of hate came from that as well. I was kind of thrown into the deep end of like, okay, now I have to be on social media. I have to be connecting with people, but also now how do I protect myself and my mental health? Um, you know, what information do I take to heart? What information do I throw out? And that's a learning curve. It's not something that you can just, you know, switch on. You you kind of have to figure out um, your own boundaries, what you're capable of, what you're, um, you know, what's necessary for you to not only grow as a person, but, um, you know, what your intent is too. Like what, what what you want your life to be like, what you want to get out of it. And social media was just you know, such a baby. Instagram was such a baby at that point. Twitter had just come out. Um, we were we were connecting with everybody so fast. And I think we were all just kind of learning together. But because I had so many health issues, things that I was trying to figure out, um, I didn't really know how to tell people about that. Um, I don't remember, remember like what year it was, but there was, I remember posting something that was like, 
this sounds so cheesy now, but it was, you know, under construction. And the reason I put that was because, you know, it's like, I also don't know what's happening to me. So I can't really tell you, I can't give you an answer. This is just what's happening. So we're kind of dealing with it together. Um, and that's, you know, that's hard to process as a teenager. It's hard to process as a young adult. And I was lucky that I had great people around me because if, I feel like if I didn't, um, you know, who knows what would have happened. I feel like I'm a very strong, resilient person, but that also, you know, it's, it's in, because I chose good people. It's because I had good people around me um, that I think allowed me to process it in fairly healthy ways. Um, it could have easily been the opposite. So let's talk about Hippie Water. Fascinating product. Tell me about what is Hippie Water? So Hippie Water is a low-dose, hemp-derived, cannabis-infused sparkling beverage. Say that five times fast. Um, it is um, the new beverage brand that I'm launching. It's much more than that. Um, it's a lifestyle enhancer. Um, you know, the, the cannabis beverage space is one that a lot of people don't know about yet. Uh, but there's tons of opportunity. Uh, Hippie Water is kind of at the forefront of that social shift. So uh, millennials and Gen Z, they are drinking less alcohol. Um, you know, there's lots of data to, to prove that. I think in general, um, they are also always looking for ways to better themselves more than a lot of generations before them. There are so many wellness products. That's just a perfect example of how that market is booming. Um, and because of this self-improvement, they are looking for alcohol alternatives. Now there's lots of those, especially in the last five years in the industry, um, in the beverage category. Uh, we want to take advantage of that space. Um, and we really feel like we can be the top product in our category based on the quality of our product and, and our you know, go-to-market strategy and, and what we offer. Um, so we're really excited about it. And, you know, we've done a lot of hard work to get to the point that we're at. You have a unique founding team. Tell me about your team. Yeah. So there's four of us, four co-founders. Um, it is, um, my other female founder is, is Taylor Ackerman, uh, is, oh, sorry, Taylor Ackerman Sewell. <laughs> we've got lots of names here. Um, she is a food scientist specializing in beverages. Uh, she's been coined actually the beverage queen by Taco Bell. So she's been in the industry for over 10 years and um, has, you know, now made our product, which I think is very unique. There's not many companies that have a food scientist making their product on um, their board uh, as a co-founder. So she is our CPO. Um, sorry, I am the CEO. Um, and my husband uh, is the CMO. He has been, um, you know, in social marketing and lifestyle brands and production um, behind the scenes um, for also, you know, over 10 years. Um, he's dedicated to that space. Alex, Taylor's husband, um, so Alex Sewell, uh, he is our COO. He also around 10 years has been in the tech marketing and startup space. Um, so he has built products, uh, raised over $250 million dollars, um, for these products. Um, he's incredible in our operations department. He, you know, he specializes in startups essentially and startup businesses. And he's helped, you know, pave the way for a lot of those companies. Um, so he's ex especially knowledgeable um, in that respect. So we're, we're lucky to have him. And it's hard enough to build a business with one co-founder, but you essentially have three co-founders, four of you. How do you guys make sure to build that, build that business in, 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 as a cohesive unit? Yeah, it's a great question. We're breaking the first rule, which is don't do business with family and friends. So, you know, check that one. However, um, because of our unique situation, I think we have a lot of things going for us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be transparent. Of course, there are things that you that you struggle with. Um, it's, it's never easy. What I think is really great about us is the fact that, you know, we're really dedicated to the business. So the four of us have different lanes. Um, we respect each other. We, we really lean on each other's expertise in those areas. We don't pretend to know each other's areas. Um, you know, we're the four of us are a unit. And of course, you know, we're also married. So um, that brings in a different aspect or it brings a different aspect to it, which I feel like can be a positive and a negative. You know, there are things that come from both of those things. Would you recommend going to business with your spouse? We'll continue our interview in a moment after a word from our sponsor. Most businesses use up to 16 tools to hire, manage, and pay their workforce. But there's one platform that's replaced them all. That's Deal, D-E-E-L. Deal is the all-in-one HR and payroll platform built for global work. The smartest startups in my portfolio use Deal to integrate HR, payroll, compliance, and everything else in a single product. Focus on what you do best, scale your business, and let Deal do the rest. Deal allows you to hire, onboard, and pay talent in over 150 countries, from background checks to built-in contracts. 
You can manage the entire worker lifecycle from a single and easy to use interface. Click the link in the show notes below to book a free no strings attached demo with Deal today. It's a case by case basis. So Hudson and I work together anyway. We are always working together. You know, he does all of my um, content. Um, we write together. We produce together. Um, we have a son. You know, we literally every single day are are building things, building our lives, building our companies together. Not a lot of people can do that with their spouse. Uh, COVID was a great example of that. You know, all of a sudden people are spending way more time with their spouses or their partners than they used to. And it's it's different for us. That's what we're used to. So for us, it's cohesive and it's something that we actually take pride in. Um, what I did want to mention as far as uh, the four of us as co-founders go is we have taken precautionary measures. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that our investors are comfortable. We, we take people's money very seriously. Um, we spend our money wisely, but as far as, uh, the four of us go, um, Taylor and I have majority ownership in the company. That's also something that we pride ourselves in as a female founded company. Um, it's her and I on the board and we just added Josh Joseph to, um, our company who, um, he is one of the four founders of Grassroots, which is one of the biggest cannabis, uh, companies in, um, cannabis, uh, that they had the biggest exit. So they sold for 830 million in 2020. Uh, he's extremely experienced in that space. We wanted to make sure that we had somebody in cannabis, um, you know, that knows this space way more than we could ever imagine, with, you know, over 20 years of experience. Um, but he will be a board member. So it'll be the three of us. So, you know, uh, there'll be an unbiased opinion who is really experienced. So as far as, you know, that four co-founder dynamic goes. You have a tie break mechanism. Yeah. And also here's the thing, like with married couples um, and friends, you know, you often you often don't want to see the negativity. So even if it's us subconscious, you might not even know, but something that somebody is doing might not be, you know, best. And so having somebody else kind of call that out was extremely important to us. You looked at 161 SKUs when you started Hippie Water. It's a competitive space. Is Hippie Water something that needs to exist? What is the differentiation against other products? Yeah, so as a consumer and uh, on the business side, we looked at a lot of different cannabis beverages. Um, there are quite a few out there. We also think that's a positive. You know, we didn't want to be the first person or first business in this space because it is new. We want to learn from other people's mistakes and see, you know, the positives. Um, now, the space is quite interesting. Um, there's lots of low dose, high dose beverages out there. We are low dose. That is just a side note. There are so many white label beverages in the cannabis space where, you know, they're they're made, made by the same co-packer and they just... You just slap their name on it. It's it's really sugary or it tastes like weed. So it tastes like you're drinking bong water. The quality is not there. Um, you know, they're just kind of subpar and, and mediocre. And uh, we knew that we could make a superior product. Um, what we do see as well is uh, a lack of education. So a lot of people don't know that cannabis beverages even exist. They don't even know that you can consume cannabis. I've been telling way. people. Yeah. I've been right? spreading so, the word even this yeah. past weekend. Awesome. Um, so that's a necessity. You know, it's it's a, a really cool new way to consume cannabis. Um, there's tremendous benefits to consuming it this way. Um, but we want to really make sure that we embed ourselves in the market, uh, not just in cannabis, but investing in consumers themselves. Uh, you know, we'll be really authentic with our storytelling. We think that's extremely important, how this can actually benefit people in their day to day life. What's the use case for hippie water? That's a great question. Um, we really want to empower people's choice. So um, the way that our eye takes place, it gives you the choice. Do you want to, you know, just take a load off after work, have a hippie water, uh, relax on the couch, watch TV, um, you know, get good sleep? Um, or are you trying to be social that night? And if you, or, you know, the day, whenever you're trying, <laughs> if you want to have a couple with friends, you can socialize the same way that you socialize with alcohol um, or other substances, except you don't feel like shit in the morning. There's where we are that social beverage without the downsides, um, both in the, the content and how we're made, the actual quality of our beverage and, you know, the, the results of socializing. So it allows you to go out, ha be a little relaxed, enjoy yourself, but also not, not, not pay the price in the morning. Tell me about the, the formula or special formula around the nano emulsions. Tell me about how hippie water works. Yeah. So, um, Taylor, our, you know, um, our product officer, she's amazing in, in what she does. She really deeply cares about, um, her products. Obviously this has her name on it. Um, so I guess I'll start with the basics, you know, emulsion is essentially, um, 
combining things that don't mix easily. So think of like oil and water, salad dressings, you don't have to shake them. Um, the nano emulsion is uh, that on a tiny scale. So the emulsifier, which we use, it's a natural emulsifier. You can find it in like you know, butter or mustard or those sorts of things. Um, they're super tiny. And because of that, they latch on to your particles and it seeps into your bloodstream much easier. It's a consistent, quicker high because of that. Um, edibles are, they have to go through your liver. So the way that they get processed through your body is part of why it's really inconsistent and it takes like an hour. Uh, whereas hippie water, you essentially pretty instantly get it into your system. It doesn't have to go through your liver. You get that nice smooth high and you taper off pretty evenly as well. Um, then as far as our ingredients goes, our formula is made in Italy with the highest ingredients. Um, we are, you know, no sugar added. We use real fruit juice. Um, we have no artificial flavors. We, you know, we're very clean. You will understand everything on our label. How, how many calories? Nothing to hide. 35. 35. And we are four um, grams of carbs. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that is because, like I was saying, my health issues, um, I have to be on a low carb diet. I was like, I want this is for me. You know, this is this is our beverage. This is for me. I want to be able to drink it. Um, so we have uh, four carbs in, in all three of our drinks. Tell me about your distribution. And more specifically, I know the farm bill was a big part of your strategy. Yeah. Tell me about the farm bill and how does that help you in your distribution? Yeah, so uh, we have four distribution points. Um, we're in Southern California. We're in Chicago, Dallas, and Pennsylvania. Um, we, okay, so the difference between marijuana and hemp, uh, I'll make this quick because <laughs> uh, a lot of people don't actually know. So under the farm bill, we are federally legal. We can um, sell direct to consumer in 45 or a little over 45 states. Um, and that's just, you know, adding um, where marijuana cannot. So marijuana and hemp, um, they're, they're essentially sisters. So the difference is the plant. The THC themselves, the actual compound of THC is exactly the same. It's the same high. There's nothing different um, in that respect. But marijuana has more THC. Uh, hemp has more CBD. And so uh, with the regulations the way they are currently, marijuana, you can only sell in the state that it's grown. Uh, whereas our hemp, we can sell and distribute normally. Uh, interstate, interstate, interstate commerce. Interstate. And you could do D to C. Yeah. So are, right. are you guys primarily D to C and is that the long-term strategy? I have the advantage of obviously having over 20 million followers. I can reach people fairly instantly. Um, this is a huge part of our go-to-market. Obviously, that is uh, something that will be directed pretty quickly to our, our, our DTC. Um, and the advantage we have in that respect is we get essentially instant results on who's buying, who's engaging, who's commenting. So that's, you know, our demographic right there. Uh, where they are, where they're from, um, you know, what what the result is from engagement to purchase. Um, we get insights that a lot of people have to work really hard for in the beginning. Um, we, you know, there are challenges when advertising with cannabis still, unfortunately. So we have to be really creative in that, in that respect. Um, social media is a great way. We just have to jump through a couple hoops. I can obviously talk about it um, on my platforms. Um, on my podcast, uh, we'll be going on to other people's podcasts. We'll be creating our own hippie water podcast. A lot of that is based on education, um, all leading back to our website, to our merch, to, you know, buying hippie water itself um, online. Um, but we're creating valuable content to engage and to make sure that those people keep coming back. Our business is more than just a beverage company. Um, we are a media entity. Um, and that's that's a big part of um, what we're working on and, and making sure that we're providing value value to our consumers, whether that be, you know, um, how to take a five minute meditation um, to how hippie water improves your life and how you can use it. The media strategy is a is an underappreciated strategy. We had Jake Paul and Joey Levy from Better, and they've been able to dramatically bring down their customer acquisition costs through their media channel. Right, exactly. I mean, that's so that's that's a huge benefit. Um, also, for me, you know, when I'm I've got a movie coming out in the, in the in summer, and so I'm going to be going on a press tour anyway, and it allows me to talk about hippie water and get into publications that you know would be harder for a lot of other people to get into. So there's definitely benefits there. There are benefits to um, influencers, you know, friends that I know, people that we can get um, hippie water to. Um, obviously, dispensaries, um, a lot of these companies now um, that we're you know, friends with and working with um, can put our drinks in their bars and their restaurants. Um, Minnesota is a great example. They have cannabis beverages in their grocery stores. 
there are a lot of ways to put this product in front of people that um, you may be surprised about. Is there a different strategy kind of to go zero to one to, to start the distribution versus, you know, in five years? Yeah, I mean, of course. And and we're we're always willing to to, to pivot and find what's best. Um, we really feel confident in this starting point. You know, we've got different zones. Um, we've really handpicked who we're, we're going with as far as our co-packers and um, our third parties. Um, but it can definitely grow. I think our our most important thing is placement currently um, and those that early data on and how we can best target the people that are that are interested in our products. So let's talk about being a female founder. You mentioned uh, off camera that it was it was a struggle uh, and that you wanted to shine a light on female founders and help female founders. What are the main challenges that female founders have today? I love this question. We'll get right back to the interview, but first to stay updated on all things emerging managers and limited partners, including industry trends and insights on how to raise LP capital. Please subscribe to our newsletter powered by Caria Labs, a full service content marketing firm that's partnered with us on the newsletter. Visit 10X Capital Podcast to subscribe. That's www.10xcapitalpodcast.com. Thank you. So I'm going to preface with the fact that I have a podcast called Women in the New Podcast, um, where even before Hippie Water was was born, I was already speaking about women in business, the challenges that we face, um, you know, women's mental health. Um, we call, cover a lot of taboo topics, uh, but women in business is a big one. Um, a lot of women have, you know, different experiences, but one that I've definitely found and seen pretty consistent with a lot of women is just getting in the door, just getting somebody willing to um, look at your deck or your proposal or listen to what you're talking about or your advice or, or whatever it is, your outlook. Um, it is so difficult to just get somebody to pay attention sounds a little dramatic, but it's not. Um, and, you know, I have a little bit of advantage because of my followers. People have a different reason to initially listen. Um, but, you know, even us, we've, we've encountered that. Um, we have to do more explaining. Um, we feel like we have to always prove ourselves a little bit more. It's simply just being able to get in the door and have somebody um, take a chance, uh, you know, like they would with anybody else. You can't raise the money if you're not in the meeting. I have a close yeah. family member, but he went to Harvard. He always claims that he would have been very successful despite going to Harvard. And I say, how do you know? <laughs> it's impossible to kind of run yeah. an A-B test. So I think it's 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 That's hard true. to actually, hard, hard to sometimes know the, ex the extent of the uh, of the difficulties. How can you actually effectuate change? What's your strategy for, for making it easier for other women? Representation is huge. I think a lot of it is, um, you know, for women is it, it's discouraging. It's like, why do why should I even bother? Why should I even bother doing this when I know that, you know, it's going to be really hard or that, you know, my idea won't even get heard. Um, I think, I think it's based mainly on seeing successful women pave the way um, and, and do it the right way and then pass that knowledge down. You know, um, I think uh, it's also a comparison. Um, it's, Women in, in ways like we are guilty of it. We we do it to ourselves in lots of ways. You know, comparison is one of the worst things that you can do. Um, everybody is different. Everybody's at a different stage in life. I want to reach out to women and show them, you know, the playbook. I don't want to keep it for myself. Everyone has room. Everyone has space. There is space for everybody. And, and I think that's the biggest um, thing. It kind of goes back to Roger Bannister when he broke the four minute mile, uh, like uh, in the next few months, a bunch of people broke it. So I think a lot of people just want to yeah. see that's possible. And I think People like Kim Kardashian um, and, and other female founders are, are paving that way. You're a formidable entrepreneur. I've, I've you know, from, from our several conversations, what, what, what do you bring from being an actress to being an entrepreneur? In so many ways, before I even realized it, I, I was an entrepreneur. You know, as an actress or as an actor, um, you have to be really hardworking. You have to be dedicated to what you're doing. Um, it takes a lot out of you. You know, it looks really fun and glamorous from the outside. And in, in so many ways it is, in so many ways, I hate that part of it actually. Um, but as long as you love your job, you, I mean, you're spending 16 hours a day at work. You have to really love it. And I, I feel like I get, I've gotten such a good work ethic from acting. You, I'm very ded dedicated to it. I love what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to making it the best it can be. Um, you know, a big part of that is storytelling and putting yourself in other people's shoes. So as far as the entrepreneur side of it goes, you know, I think one of the the most important things you can do is understand your consumer. Who is buying this product? Why are they buying this product? Why do they need it? What, what makes them want it and come back for more? And I think the other thing that we learn as actors is, well, at least we should learn, I should, I should say a lot of us um, need to be more aware of it, 
uh, is that, you know, we don't know everything on set and you don't know everything on, uh, you know, in business. So as an actor, I know a lot of my departments, but I can't do what they do. You know, I know how sound works for the most part, probably more than a lot of other actors do because I really pay attention to it. But I can't do what they do. I can't do what the camera guy does. I can't, you know, um, you know, structure lighting like the grip can. Like I just I, I understand what they do, but I'm not going to pretend like I can do it. And I think that is a really important thing for me as a CEO. I want to hire people that are smarter than me in their areas to make our company better. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know everything. You are a very authentic person. Uh, was that always the case or is this something that's developed in you? Appreciate that. Um, I feel like it. I think like it's always been there. Um, I think in general, I've always loved people. I'm a people's person. I like, um, you know, socializing, of course, but like I, I like, you know, I don't know. I like people um, that hasn't, you know, really I haven't been quite jaded in that department yet. Um, I hope I never will be, but yeah, I like, I like connecting with people. I like, um, finding similarities. Um, you know, I, I think, I think it's part of the joy in life, you know, is, is connection and community, um, and, and making sure that you don't lose that. Yeah. So, so speaking of being able to connect, what are your other superpowers? I think resilience, you know, um, learning, learning how to compromise, learning how to, um, make things um better in in general like i'm i'm always looking to make things better where you know if, if that's like you know for my son or um or a business or i'm i'm always looking for opportunity um i feel like that's kind of my my superpower what's some unfair advantage you mentioned your reach and feel free to name drop you know how have you gotten other celebrities or other people involved in the business and galvanized support for hippie water yeah i mean i think you know obviously talking about it, like I, I've got a lot of friends on the internal side of the industry behind the camera that are really excited about it that just like, you know, kind of happen to know, oh, well, you know, my stepdad's so-and-so would be interested in this. And, you know, those kind of things, like it's surprising, like, you know, who people know and 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 what they have to offer. Um, you know, a, a lot of my, my friends that I worked with are really excited about the product. So a lot of that is just, you know, sharing it um, and just getting them to taste it and seeing what they think. Um, Natural support, I think, is the biggest thing. You know, of course, we can pay influencers, uh, but again, people that actually love the product is, is is a whole nother thing. What you like our audience to know about you, and how could our audience be of help to you, Sasha? I want to get hippie water out there. That's that's my biggest thing. Is I want you to know our name, um, and I want you to expect to know our name in a in a big big way for years to come. We are dedicated to launching the product. We want that initial support of, yeah, believe in us because we, we've got this. Um, you know, we're going to do it regardless. Um, and we'd love, we'd love that support. Uh, jump on board now. Um, and also just, you know, word of mouth. You know, like this, this space is, is still, of course, somewhat of a baby. And what we need is people hearing about it, people to know about the cannabis beverage space. Um, it's growing. It's going to be here. It's it's going to stay. Uh, but the sooner we get, you know, more more eyes on it, more education on it, more research done in those areas, um, the better, the richer it's going to be. You know, both, you know, of course, in money and uh, and education. Distribution is a, a huge one. Um, I we've already gotten actually contacted by a lot of dispensaries. On somewhat of a side note, um, who have just kind of heard about us word of mouth. You know, whenever the product's ready, we'd love to get you in our dispensaries, which is super cool. So yeah, of course, connections, that's, that's always the biggest, um, you know, help in the beginning is, is how to utilize, um, those companies. If you have any connections that you want to share with us, please, please. I, do. I have a couple and I'm sure the, <laughs> the, the listenership that does as well. Uh, Sasha, what's the next five to 10 years look like for you? I obviously am very dedicated to hippie water, um, on, on a little bit of a side note. I think that's something that also sets us apart because a lot of celebrity founded brands, which makes you want to throw up that I just call myself a celebrity, but you know what I mean? Celebrity founded brands. Um, I think a million plus uh, qualifies. So I think, <laughs> I think you're within, within the range. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, you know, cross, cross that off the list. However, a lot of these brands have a celebrity, you know, in whatever capacity and they just kind of like slap their face on it and then their work is done. You know, I'm, I'm very committed to this. I'm going to see this through. It's, it's important to me for so many more reasons um, other than, you know, hopefully getting a nice paycheck at the end. Like this is this is a big deal to me. Um, and I, I really love and stand by this product. Aside from hippie water, 
I've got my podcast, but I've, I've got my movie coming out um, that I can't really talk about yet uh, in the middle of the year, which we're excited about, but we're constantly writing. The next five to 10 years is going to be really about expanding our you know, production company and, and bringing hippie water into it and building an empire that crosses over into my entertainment industry. And what is the best way for people to get in contact with you? Um, so you can email me. Email me at sashahippiewater.com. Please use the email sparingly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, Sasha Petersa. But you can also um, find me on Instagram and all my social platforms. So Sasha Petersa everywhere. Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok. Well, well, Sasha, you you built a connection with me within the first two minutes that we first chatted. <laughs> and I've been I've been really looking forward to it. I, I really I know you're super busy. I appreciate you jumping on the podcast. What would you like? Uh, what would you like to shine a light on uh, for the audience? Um, that, you know, it's good to search for alternatives. You know, I, I think that this is a whether it's, you know, of course, I want you to drink hippie water. But regardless, I think moving in this healthy direction is so important for for all of us to really evaluate these types of areas in our life. Um, you know, I, I drink alcohol very sparingly, not because I don't like it, but because it just doesn't fit into my life anymore. And I think a lot of people are in this position uh, of self-improvement. So shining a light on, I guess, the fact that you can still enjoy yourself, enjoy that social atmosphere, enjoy and find that relaxation that you might get from other resources or other, other places, other substances, that you can get that with hippie water. You can get that with a cannabis beverage um, and continue to enjoy, you know, those experiences while having a kid, while getting up really early for work, while, you know, building a company, what, whatever your life is, this can fit in. And um, I think it's in general a world that's definitely worth taking a look at. What would you like your legacy to be t- to your son? Oh, um, that's a great question. Um, I want him to know that he can, he can build something that he wants. You know, I'm not going to, I don't want to force him to go in any direction. I want to fully support what his strengths are. So I guess as far as my legacy goes, I want him to see me as somebody that made my dreams happen. Absolutely. Well, this has been uh, incredibly uh, insightful and, and look forward to meeting up either here in New York or in Nashville and look forward to catching up then. Thank you so much, David. I really appreciate it and thoroughly enjoyed this.